Very good to have your company. It started as one-off niche collections to target the wealthy Muslim buyer. Now Islamic fashion, as it's become known, is going global as top designers caught the Muslim consumer. This is Roundtable. Brands such as Donna Karan and Nike, among others, are recognizing the buying power of the world's ever-expanding Muslim population. And many have, as a result, created special designs to cater to this particular shopper. But is it all just for publicity? Spotlighting the hijab, or marketing modest clothing, luxury brands are looking to tap the booming Muslim fashion business. Among them, Nike, Dolce & Gabbana and Burberry who have created collections to profit from the lucrative Muslim dollar, some more successfully than others. But experts estimate that consumer spending in the Islamic fashion sector will reach $361 billion by 2023. And it's a sector that's growing 5% every year. Turkish consumers lead the way, followed by the UAE and Indonesia. Industry insiders credit the growing presence of Muslim social media influencers in boosting the trend. But many Muslim consumers say they're not fully represented by luxury brands who target high net worth buyers. So is the Islamic fashion trend a cultural breakthrough or are brands just cashing in? And I'm very pleased to say with, with me is Maria Idrisi. She hit the headlines as the first hijab wearing model in a mainstream fashion campaign. Alia Khan here too, chairwoman of Islamic Fashion Design Council. We have the menswear designer, Kevin Turton, and Hanan Abdul Khalik, an ethical fashion journalist. Great to have you here. I have to say, I feel very underdressed sitting here as I'm in a casual linen jacket. But, Anna, let me come to you first of all, because since all of these three think it's, it's the big coming thing in, in, in many ways, I have to say from what you've told our producers that you don't think it is quite this. You think it is a bit of a con. Uh, the modest fashion industry. I do, yes. <laughs> it's quite controversial, but honestly, I feel like it's almost antagonizing that uh, a whole section has been created for Muslim women as if we haven't been curating our outfits for years in a modest way. And I do think that it is just the fact that we have these modest uh, like campaigns coming out now conveniently when Islamophobia is quite rife and when it's quite popular to fill the diversity quota, it just seems very disingenuous and inauthentic. Um, so yeah, I, I personally find, and, and to be honest, the only thing that's modest about fashion today is the fact that it's on a Muslim woman. But essentially, modest fashion is fast fashion. It's exactly the same thing. I don't think that, that there should be a distinction right now. And I think instead of focusing on the conversation that, that really focuses on Muslim women and, and the weaponization of, of their bodies and, and you know, how they use them and how they dress themselves, the conversation should be more towards you know, the fast fashion industry and modern day slavery and global warming as a result of mm. it. Mm. Um, so personally, I, I do feel like it is a bit of a sham to be honest. Oh, okay, uh, Alia, is it a little bit like what I see when people talk about vegans, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you see, your broccoli's got a sign on it. I mean, it's not really like this, but your broccoli's got a sign on it that says suitable for vegans, mm. simply because they feel they have to attract that market. Is that what right. we're seeing here? Um, you know, as Hanan is saying, yeah. it, it, it's tokenism in its own way. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that she's too far off. I think, I think there is validity to what she said. However, um, being uh, a person who embraces Islamic fashion, let's say, you have that responsibility to be Islamic. Right. And if you understand the definition of what that is, it means that you do have a responsibility to be sustainable, ethical, mm -hmm. make the right choices, mm -hmm. live the right way, um, uphold the best character in society. That all goes with how you dress. But that's been happening for centuries, hasn't it? Yes, it has Modest been Modest fashion. But it's the word fashion that's been attached to it that's mm -hmm. new. Well, look, I think it's up to the brands to provide the product. And if there is a demand for it, then it's going to get bought. And they're proving that there is a demand yeah. for so, it. So why now? Why is it so? Your, your organization, a couple of years ago, you said 9,000 members, maybe, maybe smaller than that, now up to 12,000 and growing. Why has it taken off like this? Well, is, look, is it because, as Hanan said, you know, people feel that they have to sort of counter Islamophobia, et cetera, et cetera? 
Well, she's right that they were curating it from since the beginning of time. I mean, you know, modest fashion and modesty has been in vogue since uh, Adam and Eve were told to cover, wasn't it? So, I mean, it goes back quite a long way, and it, it'll go back. Uh, it'll go till the end of time, because when you embrace a lifestyle like this, you're doing it for a higher reason. You are you are embracing a certain principle, a certain faith-based mm -hmm. guideline, and that's what it's about first and foremost. And if people you're always going to get that fraction of people that will use it to sort of, you know, be with the trend for that moment and perhaps leave it. Mm -hmm. But the majority, whether the industry comes and goes, it doesn't matter to but, them. But this leads me to the to the suggestion. This is for anybody, but um, Maria, you haven't said anything. Neither Kevin, you just jump in any time you want, any one of you. <laughs> this leads me to the sense that we have a fashion industry that is perhaps attempting to rip off the modest woman by saying, you know, this is the new cool thing. Mm. I liked your example of putting a vegan label on broccoli because I do feel sometimes that is literally what's happening in, in our industry. And it's weird because only the other day I was, I was thinking to myself, I've been in this industry now for about four years, which is quite new to, to many people, but it just didn't make sense in my head how we are calling it modest or Islamic fashion, but then all the principles that come along with that are completely disregarded. Mm. And it's still part of... Go through of, them? Go, the one, go so through the example, ones that yeah, are disregarded? the sustainability, being ethical, how we're treating people that are actually making our clothes, who is actually making our clothes, all of these steps to getting the product to, you know, what it is today. I feel like we're, we've disregarded that and just focused on the end result, which is she's covered up and that means it's halal because essentially that's what we're, we're calling it in other words, when in reality it's not really. As a fashion designer, consultant, whatever you want to call what you do, you've had a lot of people come into you and saying, this is something I want to get in for business reasons. Yeah, so, so I've been approached by multiple people, uh, male and female, who approached me to start a modest brand. And I think, just to pick up on the other points there, I think at its core, modest fashion, it's a good idea. It's taking what maybe has always been uh, a black, a plain black Jill Barb and adding some creativity to it. So I think the message of modest fashion at its core is fine. I think where it's gone a bit squiffed is we've now got where the boundaries are being pushed um, and things that uh, probably wouldn't fall into the category of being mm -hmm. modest mm -hmm. are now being pushed as being modest. On top of that, we've got some commercial enterprises which are trying to Well, can you give me it. examples? Of where the boundaries are being pushed well, and I've, being I've, pushed too far. And, and, and any one of you. And he's right. Yeah. He's right. That yeah. we, we are seeing that. And we do see a lot of mixed reviews when uh, some of the mainstream brands yeah. try to come up with something that they call the Ramadan collection. But then they have... It's like a Shamadan. Well, <laughs> I mean, look, they're entitled. I, I don't knock them for doing it. Everyone's yeah. entitled to partake in any, any business opportunity that happens across the board. They're not philanthropists. They're businesses at the end of the day, and they're mandated to make mm. money uh, in the fashion industry. True, so, but at the same time, they shouldn't then be surprised if the campaign doesn't do well just because absolutely. people feel antagonized. Yeah. Well, and could, they could, haven't could, done their homework. That's what they've Correct, proven. and there's, there's and also not enough people in the, It's clear that there's not enough people in the room that they're claiming to represent there. So there's not enough Muslim women who are there. But can, can I ask you, as... as I, I don't really get this, you know, I, I'm not the expert sitting here. When you said it crossed the boundaries, when you say they got it wrong, can you okay, give I'll, me an example? I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll give an example yeah. of that. So I think, I th my worry is not the big brands. That doesn't really phase me. I've got a problem with maybe some of the ethical approaches worry me, but I think with the big brands, it, it, it's a trend and, and all trends will pass. What I find more worrying is when we see Muslims who are propagating a message which you could argue is 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 pushing the boundary. So what do we mean by that? So um, the very very fitting tight clothes, with mixed with a hijab, um, elements that should be covered that are not appropriately covered. Um, You're more focused on the. Individual. No, you, you you'll get your chance. Just let uh, it finish, so and then you can yes, disagree with him. That's ca so it's though it's that it's yeah. probably more the individuals who might have a million followers. You know, many of, on, on Instagram. But that's been platform. going on for, for even before this whole right. thing became I, huge. I mean, yeah, that's totally. been going on for generations where, and I think that's that boils down to personal choice and it boils down to yeah. us saying there's no compulsion in religion. So whatever their interpretation of the hijab is, whether it's wrong or right by our standards or your standards, uh, you know, gives them the entitlement to, to sort I of think go my through their call me, call, call me stupid and many people do, um, but I still haven't heard... A, okay, a, for an example. Brand. So, for example, Dolce & Gabbana, yeah. they did um, an Abaya line, which they released in, like, for mm -hmm. the Middle East. And on one of the models, they had like a slit on the Abaya up to her leg, which therefore makes it 
unrealistic for yeah. us to wear. No, no, <laughs> okay. also, no like, I, I get that. Mango, but we, we, Mango also did one recently. Who? Uh, Mango, yeah. the, the, the brand. They, they put a model um, and she had like short sleeves. And again, like I don't want to focus Oh, Banana on... Republic. Was it Banana Republic? Yeah. Sorry, Sorry and Mango. There was also a <laughs> That's two libel anyway. suits coming our way. <laughs> <laughs> but again, like, I don't want I don't want the focus to be on how Muslim women should dress. Mm. Personally, I think that's that's a tired conversation. I think that's between the the, the the woman and her lord. And also, like, fair enough, if you're an influencer and you you you, you are influencing a huge amount of people, but I think that conversation let's park that conversation for a second. You know, the fact that they had that short sleeved model, it, it, it was very clear that they did not have Muslim women present in the or must, or, or Muslim Styling women her. in mind. What it may have been is because it's become slightly fashionable, it may have been a form of cultural appropriation and designed not to be sold, perhaps, to Muslim women. That one women, was definitely, they used but the red hijab. To be sold so to somebody who thinks it's sure. rather cool to be dressed in a, a so called hijab. Know. But we you don't. always take that risk. When something becomes trendy and fashionable, then you'll take, you know, you'll see celebrities in Hollywood wearing a hijab like scarf in, in that style with mini skirts or whatever it is, right? Because then it just becomes a trend or it becomes a, a yeah. you know, a, a, a fashion tool, if you will. So um, I think we have to accept that. We have to have a level of tolerance for those types of things. I, I agree that it is not, it doesn't display that that brand has done their due my, my, diligence. My opinion on that is in reference to influencers. It's right, not right, in right, reference right, right, to right. general people. It's people who have got a platform that's geared around modest fashion, they've got a million followers and their core message is about fashion and modest fashion. That's my, that's where I... It goes I... back to what you said about interpretation because different, I know mm. as a Muslim, we know that there are definitely conditions of the hijab mm. that many of us don't fulfill. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't on a, in one week. Yeah. And I do think there is a slight responsibility, of course, if, if a Muslim woman, if her whole branding is around promoting Islamic fashion, then yes, yeah, she's going to be a target because if she's not doing it according to And let's also understand the, the meaning of hijab. The hijab is not just a scarf on your head and however you don it. That's not, that's not the How idea. You no, because my yeah, mum no, used to wear yeah, a scarf a hijab, on her head to stop her hair blowing No, but away. there's a hijab of the tongue. There's a hijab of <laughs> yeah. the eyes. There's a hijab of the ears. Like what you say, what you see, what you harbor your in your heart, there's a hijab there. So once you've sort of perfected your Because hijab, literally translated, it means? It, it means a, a veil or a covering yeah. or, you know, so what it means is there's, there's got to be some sort of boundaries that you live by Modestly. that, that yes, mm -hmm. allow you to be modest, but allow you to also be a better person, to uphold better character, and to be also, better for society. You also have to understand that Muslim women are now, like, we're existing in a society that's largely, it's, it's a capitalistic society. So they are moving in it through, based on, like, how everyone else is moving through it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like at the time, you know, perhaps Muslim women, I just feel like the focus is way too much. The conversation is always on Muslim women and what they do with their bodies. But the focus, again, should go back to the fast fashion industries and, and global warming. So how That's do you a change bigger, any bigger... of this? How do you change it? It's out there, isn't it? So I feel like... Let's know, ask Kevin in a minute because okay. he's in the business. But yeah, yeah your, your thoughts quickly. <laughs> um, I feel like uh, to, to truly find something, to, to ensure that something is ethical, 100%, um, we were having this conversation um, before the show, it's virtually impossible in this uh, society. However, I think what you can go down to is if you do your own research, you're looking at the supply chain, you're finding out exactly how things are sourced, you're doing your bit. And to encourage people just to be conscious when they're with their consumer choices and to be, what does say sustainability mean? It just means like, you know, buying less, you know, or, mm. you know, buying from brands that are not exploiting workers, you know? It's, it's yeah. just, it's just your, it's your duty, your moral obligation to society to just ensure that you're doing your yeah. research. As somebody who's in the business, yeah. it's impossible to stop, isn't it? It's, it's like King Canute with the tie. Can't, well, you, you can't push it because, back. Because you, 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 the, the people who are pushing it are the, are the powerhouses of the fashion world. You've got huge brands pushing modest fashion. But I'll also say as well that in, in a more niche market, men's work, which is my background, that is the in thing at the moment. So men are wearing very high-rise trousers. Um, they're you very, mean up here? Yeah, yeah. very loose-fitting trousers. <laughs> which, not high-rise up the leg. Not high-rise up the leg. Um, that would comply to what we would perceive as being to the sun, that's addressing to modesty. So it's happening there anyway. So that the, we can't stop that happening. And I think how do we fix it is yeah. it's the people we're talking about, the influencers. It's these people who 
really should stand up and we should, as Muslims, we should carve our own... We should carve our own... I, I, I think, personally, I think, I think that's giving influencers far too much... I agree. I think it's putting, um, it's putting too much response. pressure on the influencers well. Not, no, well. no, no, it's giving them too much credit as well. Yes, Th I These agree, are people I who agree. call themselves influencers. Mm. And, and I think it's about the followers. Why are the followers getting created? influenced mm. so easily that they see somebody wearing a, whatever, their clothes in an inappropriate way and they, they should follow yeah, that? So it's really not right. about the influencer, I, I can, can I just stop this for a second? Because, Maria, in a sense, as mm. the face of this particular... You're a sort of influencer. You, you influence people to yeah. buy things. You influence people perhaps to, to want to look like mm -hmm. you. Is, is it tough? It is tough. You know, I, I'm i quite old school in some of my beliefs. Maybe traditional is the better word, where I feel that um, God didn't restrict anyone from distinguishing the truth from falsehood. So even if I was the devil itself, I'm still allowed to say the truth and the truth will never change if it's the truth. Mm. So I, I always live by, I'm not perfect. Mm. If you follow me for whatever it is I promote or just my personality, that's great. But at the same time, recognize that I'm not perfect. I'm not a prophet. But, <laughs> I, but my my purpose you, in life as is- As the face of a particular campaign, yeah. um, happily sit alongside the fact that it's a commercial brand that may not be doing exactly what you believe is the right thing when it comes to. It's been Modest a journey, passion. I'll be honest. That's why I've come, I've come to a point now. From the start of my career, I actually was scouted. I wasn't planning on this whole career ever happening in my entire life. Did so, that feel uncomfortable? Um, fortunately, I have, I have a background in film, so I, I used to do drama. So I was comfortable, you know, taking pictures and being on camera. Okay. But with, you know, all the, the hate that came with it initially, I was definitely, I don't what think anyone's that? really ready for that. You know, it's very 50-50 opinion. So you've got some Muslims who are like, yes, we need representation. And you've got some Muslims who were like, oh my God, like judgment day's coming. So, <laughs> so it was very, so, so dealing with that, I think for anyone is gonna be a, um, an experience. But, but this also but points out, does it not, that this is a very tricky path to it follow is because in, people, in whatever people, way you do it. And also I think we're all, mini influencers in our own lives. I think we all need to uphold yeah. our own values and I think we need to sort of be an example for whoever it is that we can be an example for. Mm -hmm. So for example, I'm a huge advocate of upcycling, recycling, used mm -hmm. clothing I think is, is a, a gold mine. I think people should go into used clothing, used clothing stores more often. And, and the rental model. I'm a big proponent of renting clothes. So, and that all leads to um, lower consumer, consumerism, lower mm -hmm. production, mm -hmm. and a better quality of life. So, you know, if I can just, what I'm wearing today is uh, from a uh, high-end luxury used clothing uh, platform and they but do there is, it But there's well. a difference between used clothing and used clothing, isn't there? Well, I mean, I mean that's you, all about curating about this it, is, right? This is perhaps something that is absolutely beautiful. It's something that's been worn perhaps once or twice and would not have See, it doesn't matter, come at right? a small cost. It doesn't matter because the business owner that's into this business will know how to do it right. So they'll curate it well. They'll make sure that, of course, it's not tattered and torn or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but, but my point, my point is, sorry to interrupt you, my point is that you can say something's used and it's not used, you can say something's Islamic, modest, but it isn't actually modest. This is the, the tricky path to follow, isn't it? Right, fair enough, fair enough. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's the whole principle of what we're trying to promote, right? So being a brand ambassador for a company like this helps me to get a message across. Mm -hmm. uh, so it helps me to talk Does it help about you it. To it's get a narrative that I'm building. Well. It what? Does it help you to get free clothes as well? Mm. Well, I have to wear some of their clothes. I mean, I, I like to wear some of their clothes, yeah. so it's a nice perk. You see, there's swings and roundabouts everywhere, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Kevin? I, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, up, personally, it's up to us as Muslims to, to carve out the niche. Mm. And I think that one of the core problems here is we've got the big brands who are pushing the message I go back to I know you're not over the influencers. I go back to the influencers, back to the bloggers, back to the YouTubers who are in the, the niche field of fashion. Mm. They, if, if they want to, they can create a completely unique niche mm. that's uninfluenced by any of these outside things that are compromised. And you mentioned the short sleeve. So you have to start your own ethical and let, let's, Islamic brand rather than rely uh, on look, the more, Dolce and Gabbana more, as we more, mentioned more, at the beginning. Also a movement, a movement yeah. of mm. it rather than just a brand, a movement of ethically made, yeah. fulfills the sunnah, but without any influences from any one of the big brands or anyone telling us what to do. Or how is to that do it. happening? Because we'll, we'll talk it about it, the, the, it, 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 the fashion council. I think it's not yeah? just for Clothing. Muslims. I think this is a conversation for human beings. Absolutely. I don't think it's a thing where it's... Yeah. I think this is, this is something that every single person, regardless of your religion background, 
has to find but importance. Particularly if you're a Muslim consumer, I think you have that added responsibility. Yeah. If you live, I don't if you live a Muslim embrace lifestyle, the Islamic you know. lifestyle without knowing that there is a, a certain responsibility that comes um, with it, that's a big part of we're it. We're talking about mm. influences, but last year I was part of a project where I, I was creating a documentary about modest fashion with regards to if it's ethical. And what I did, I just went around to loads of influences and I spoke to them just very normally about like the ethical side of things. And a lot of them, unfortunately, were ignorant to it. But it planted a seed and that was like the mm. main aim of it. And I actually think people, it's not that people don't want to, to, to do it. They, they, they do, but I think it, there is a level of ignorance that, and, and that's where yeah. the moral obligation comes. I think we need to change the conversations around everything being focused focus on how we look. Yeah. and focus on the inside, even my own personal story. Yeah, but today we're talking about facts. I know, no, we are, no, but yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. but I mean, it will reflect that. No, but we are also talking about hijab, which, as we discussed earlier, has a lot of uh, preconditions yes. to the yeah, hijab before you think exactly. that you're just wearing a scarf on your head. So, yeah, I, I, I get you know, that. So, so she's right, we do, we, we do, this type of fashion mm. does have a deeper meaning. Yeah. But and what, there what are I, what values that are, that are attached to it. As we, well, unfortunately, we're getting near the end of this. Um, when you've got, um, big brands out there, and they are perhaps, if, if not corrupting, then slightly, slightly tweaking it for their own ends. And we talk about how do you change that? Mm. Then there has to have to be individuals who change it. Yeah. And is the momentum there, let me ask you as a designer, um, and then also as part of the Fashion Council, whether you think the momentum is there for that actually to take off and to end up being something that you would be really proud of wearing and, and get, it's absolutely, it, it, it's happening now, it's happening now. And, I, and you could arguably say what we're, what we're talking, the very fact we're having a conversation about it, it's teething, where people are finding their feet. Mm. It's happening and it's gonna get better. And you said it'll be there till the end of time. And modesty is always there because it's part of the religion. Um, but I think the key thing is that we, we um, as Muslims, obviously this is relating to modest fashion, we, uh, we set the agenda that we're not influenced by outside brands. And it's happening now and it'll take time. I mean, Instagram is still, very new, right? This idea that you've got a million followers, you know, parents' generations never had that opportunity. So it'll take time, but it's there for sure. Okay. It, it's, a, it's a nascent industry and you're absolutely correct. As an industry, it's just really sprung up. Before yeah. that, as Hanan said, we've been curating our own clothes, right? So now it's come to a point where there are sections that you can go to where you can see this kind of, the Ramadan collections and, and whatnot. So, but look at the positive side. I mean. It's allowing us to change the whole narrative. Yep. You're talking about Islamophobia. We're giving them a different side to that stereotype that they had of us. So now it's we've got all types wearing hijabs that are out there, speaking their story, talking, you know, to the public, and uh, and there's so okay. many public speakers this now. This is really interesting. So this is not only about what an individual might want to choose for herself. This is about changing a narrative uh, away from the as Boris Johnson once said letterboxes and, and, and bank <laughs> robbers in, into feeling sentient, um, modern, as it's, I've got written down here, modern millennial Muslim women. Well, as somebody Marketing once said, said it's, it's rebranding Islam. It's rebranding that whole yeah. Muslim look or that Muslim stereotype. So I, I don't think it's a problem when we've got I hijabi like models on, on billboards or are you, I think it just sort of yeah. softens the, the whole, uh, whole look. Are you rebranding Muslim women? I mean, that wasn't my goal, if it's happening by default. <laughs> but even then, I think it's not even about rebranding, it's about actually, I wanna go back mm -hmm. in time. I don't wanna, mm -hmm. I'm not in support of some of the things that I see, if anything. Mm -hmm. That's why I said I have, I do have quite traditional values in certain areas, even if people at face value don't, don't see that straight away. And I think it is about going back to the essence of what the hijab is, which is why I'm focused on internal. I didn't mm. wear the hijab because my dad made me at a mm. young age. I started to pray and I was like, well, this is stupid carrying a scarf with me everywhere. I might as well just keep it on my head. And that's why I feel comfortable wearing a hijab because it started from internally. Well, to put it somewhere. You know. Sorry? Might yeah. as well put it on your head. <laughs> exactly, Kevin, let me just yeah. ask, can I, we've only got about a minute to go. Oh. Muslim man yeah. telling Muslim women what they should wear. <laughs> yeah. That's no, uh, an extension sorry. of the patriarchal society. Yeah, no, not, no not, re not really, because um, I'm, I, I think the... I mean, I, I wish men, we could have a conversation more with the Muslim men, because it's just it's non-existent. And, and, you know, we've looked at doing that as a, as, as a niche so hard to do. And, and the, the, the sisters and what they're doing, it really... I think it's fantastic. I think it's great. But will it come for the men? I love the way you all laughed at that. As well, I... I I'm not so sure. I mean, I think it will. I don't think it's going to be as big as it is for the sisters. I think it will eventually. Um, whether I'll be 
involved in that, I don't know, but it'll be there eventually. But I think what the women are doing, and I think it's fantastic. The modern millennial Muslim. Yeah, do you exactly. mind being addressed as the sisters? <laughs> it's, it's, it's it sounds way on down. That type of terminology is really nice, isn't it? I mean, we can still yeah. call each other brothers and sisters. Yeah. You know, it's, it's traditional. I like it. I think it's, a, I just really wanted to make this point. I think it's really important to, I, I disagree with the whole like narrative of us having to like uh, pander to the, the greater society to say, hey, look, let me rebrand my religion to, to make me seem acceptable and cool. Like, I feel like that we shouldn't even engage with those. I don't think that that's I, I'm the intention. Have to that's the default. Ask you to of continue it. this right, conversation right, right. away from the studio because I've been told <laughs> that our time, our time oh, is up. No. Listen, thank you very, very much indeed. It's been fabulous having you on the show. It is a new era, is it not? And you, are you still out there modelling? Yeah, I'm still doing it. I do more consultancy, more behind the scenes work now. But so telling people how they should end up looking like you <laughs> on the cover of 18. <laughs> Listen, thank you very much for coming on the programme. I mean, I, what I love about this is I found out about all sorts of things that I would never otherwise have had the chance or, or thought about looking into. Appreciate your time very thank much you. indeed. Thank you. And uh, appreciate you uh, for taking the time to watch. From me, David Foster, from the Roundtable team, I have to say, when it comes to Muslim men fashion, you should take a look at our producer. Uh, we'll put a picture of him up on our YouTube <laughs> page. Extraordinary clothes, great taste, and you've all seen him too. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time, I hope. Bye-bye for now. Thanks.